The day of our Memorial Day celebration, 351, almost two years. And welcome, Michael, to the show. Thank you, sweetie. Delighted to be here. You know, you need, need, need to really say if you want to talk to Michael and Jeannie, because you're as important a part of this conversation as I am. So anyway, we're delighted that everybody is here today. We're awesomely blessed by all the things happening in our worlds, and it is amazing. It is, um, yeah, I just don't even know how to keep up with all the conversation. Uh, so anyway, uh, Memorial Day, what's that about? It's about learning to function as a human being. It's about honoring those who were forced to stop functioning as human beings in order to kill. And it's about restoring human life to planet Earth. How are we going to do that? Well, here's the game. Hold a newborn child. You know what human life is. If you don't have one, then get one. How do you get one? You've got to get rid of what doesn't belong in your structure. What the insane world has structured into you has to go. A mind filled with hostility and fear is a sad thing to live in. It's time for us to change that dynamic on planet Earth. So that's what our work together is about. In the ancient teachings, it was called liturgy. It means our common work. So here we are to do the work of healing ourselves, each other, and the planet. And how is that going to happen? Well, here's the crux of it. If I hold the capacity for some form of hostility or fear, I'm in trouble. My hostility or fear rips me off from my human life. So how am I going to be restored? I'm going to forgive. You mean I'm going to let them off the hook for all the terrible things they've done to us? No. Please, don't ever forgive anybody ever again for anything. Don't ever forgive yourself. It's a big mistake. If you want to pardon somebody, you want to pardon them, great, nice thing to do. Then go about doing your forgiveness work. And your forgiveness work is that of removing from your mind, from your emotions, from your physiology, what never belonged there, hostility or fear. Hold a newborn child. You know exactly what this human form is designed to incarnate. Incarnate as a human being, 24-7, 365, whatever everybody else is doing, you're living as the active presence of love. That's all. If you look back at all the theologies and you cut through all the hostility and fear games that men play and project into it, it all comes down to read it over and over and over again. I don't care if it's a Buddhist scriptures. I don't care if it's the Aramaic scriptures or even the Greek. It's about reclaiming your human life. It's about living as the active presence of love. And so our work of forgiveness is removing those things to prohibit us from functioning as human beings. If you're not familiar with how that process works, if you've never been told before, and you know, before uh, I, I came into this work, nobody ever told me that forgiveness was about removing content from your mind and your body. Forgiveness isn't about letting other people off the hook because that content is there. And so we're here to invite you into that process, and we make it as freely available as we possibly can. If you go to our website, www.whyagain.com, www.whyagain.com, on the right-hand side, you'll see a link that says Download Worksheets. And when you click into that link, it, the first seven links under that section will give you the whole forgiveness story. You'll have personal guidance through the process. There's no excuse not to do it, no excuse to say, I don't understand it. The understanding is all there. And if there's something that doesn't come across clearly there, then what we invite you to do is call 646 646- 200-4169. You get to have a personal conversation with Jeannie and I. And oftentimes, Dr. Tim, and oftentimes, David, uh, you've got a couple hundred years of, of practice of these tools and your awareness with all the folks that we have that uh, play in the show, that come and uh, join us and support us in doing this process. And we've just scheduled uh, two new events. Uh, we were talking about the fact that we were chatting with some folks about doing some some additional events, so we have set that up. Jeannie uh, actually went back a couple of days ago and uh, looked at what we've done over this winter, and in 86 days, we did 68 presentations, 68 workshops in 86 days, and uh, we did, I think, in the range of about 55 radio shows, we did two nine-day intensives and a three-day intensive. So we've had a fun winter. We're now getting ready to take a month off to write. We're in Fort Lauderdale. We're going to be working on uh, re-editing uh, four different books and getting them ready for publication. 
So we've got our hands full besides the radio show. And uh, Tuesday night, if you're in the Pompano Beach area, there is going to be a gathering of folks who want to uh, create support for and get support for creating support groups along the uh, southeast coast of Florida. And so if you're in earshot and you're in that area, come and join us. We're going to do a potluck dinner at uh, 630 at Unity in Pompano, Pompano Beach. And uh, so we'd, we'd be delighted if you come and join us at 630 tomorrow night. And other than that, we're just on rock and roll. If you have a question, a thought, an answer, an idea, 646-200-4169 is our number. Gee, do we have Dr. Tim? Do we have David on the show? No, um, neither one of them are on right now, but we do have a hand up. Oh, cool. Let's talk to our oh, caller. David just showed up on the on the switchboard. But our caller is area code 517 here on the air. Hello. How's Michael and Jeannie and David and Tim and everybody? Hey, Rex. How are you, sir? Doing well. I just wanted to briefly awesome. mention that we're doing our support group uh, tomorrow evening. Uh, in Lansing, so we'd love to have anyone that's on the program that may not remember that uh, to show up, and anyone who would love to be here, we'd love to have you. It would be awesome. We, uh, we're delighted for what you're doing there and supporting people and learning the tools of forgiveness. It's exciting. Yes, there's. Uh, uh, we've been generating a lot of interest, and there's been a lot of people. We had the workshop last week, and I'm hoping that some of the people come from that, or a couple weeks ago now, um, that are able to come from you know that workshop, the Y workshop, and also the people that have been coming regularly. So we're excited about that, and just you know, movement and change and growth and healing. Awesome. Delighted. Glad to be on the team. Well, I'm, I'm so I feel so blessed to be on the team as well, and and uh, it's great to be a part of what we're doing here. So, and everything you're doing, so great work. And uh, I'm just going to go back off now and uh, let uh, anybody else that might want to make a comment or uh, communicate come on the program. Blessings, everyone. Okay, so to pick up Rex's flyer for the uh, support group in Lansing, Michigan, you can go to stillpointbreathoflife.com or you can go to whyagain.com, and you'll find flyers there. There's support Thanks. Group, so. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Rex. Yep. Bye. And uh, the two programs that we've uh, we just set up, actually, they just finally, both of them gelled uh, yesterday and today, is on the 10th of June uh, through the 16th, we'll be doing a, uh, through the 15th, actually, we'll be doing a free series uh, why is this happening to me again? Series. We're going to do a lesson from the Course in Miracles on Monday night. Uh, what is the world? We're going to do on creating consciously Tuesday night. We're going to do healing through relationships on Wednesday. Communication. Did you hear what I think on Thursday? And Friday, codependence to interdependence. And then on Saturday, we're going to do mind shifters and still point breathing. So that's the week of the. 10th of June, if you're not in the area and you want to come and catch that series, uh, we'd be delighted to have you join us in Jupiter, Florida. And then we'll have a week, the week of Father's Day, we'll have off, and the uh, then we'll be in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina at the Unity Church. And we'll actually be doing the same series starting on the 24th of June at uh, Unity of uh, Wilmington. And then we'll be heading to Heartland, and uh, the 10th, uh, or pardon me, the 12th of July, we'll begin a 10-day food fund forgiveness and work project at Heartland. And uh, Ari's going to come. Chef Ari's going to come with some new awesome recipes he promises us, and some. He's going to be doing lots of teaching around food. We'll be doing work projects to get the property fixed up. This is kind of a an economy program. Instead of being 175 a day, it's 75 a day. And that will include food, accommodations, the workshop, the workshop materials, everything. We'll be doing evening workshops. Uh, we'll be doing uh, at least two in that 10 days, two mind shifters and still point breathing sessions. And um, we'll be doing work projects on, the, on Heartland's property. We've got 17 acres and 16 buildings, and there's always lots to be done. So we'll be getting uh, the property ready for the intensive season. And then we'll have a day off, and the next day we'll start with a nine-day why is this happening to me again. 
and then we'll do a nine-day teacher training, or the two of those can be combined into one 17-day teacher training workshop. So if you want to come and play, we'd love to have you join us. We do have a special uh, uh, price if somebody wants to come and spend the whole month. It's actually, I think, 28 days. So you can come and do the 10-day Food Fund Forgiveness and Work Project. You can do the nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again, the nine-day teacher training. Uh, so you'd be there that, that whole time. And uh, everything totally inclusive for the whole 28 days, if I count correctly, it's 28, will be uh, discounted to $3,500. So for, you can come and enjoy this awesome gourmet vegetarian, fresh and raw food, although Ari will be doing some cooked recipes too, so we're looking forward to that. And then we'll be moving into uh, um, actually more travel. We'll be getting on the road actually the day that completes, and off we'll go again. So we're just going to keep this, uh, you know, Johnny Appleseed game going of forgiveness sprinkled all over planet Earth. If you're out uh, up in the uh, northern area, uh, up in southern Ontario, or points west of there, we're actually going to head to southern Ontario first, and then we're going to head west through. I'm not sure, through Canada, through the United States, we're still looking at how that journey is going to go. And heading out west, we'll end up in San Diego, California in October. And then from there, we'll be heading north uh, toward uh, Seattle. We've got some folks up there that are playing with the tools. Awesome, strong support group up there that's uh, really on track with uh, everything that's happening with the work. So anyway, we'd be delighted to have you come and play. Our call-in number is 646 200-4169. We would love to hear your sweet voice with your question or your experience with the tools. What's happened? What, what, are you, what are you experiencing as you put these tools to work in your life? We'd love to hear from you. So, Jeannie, uh, anything happening in the chat room? Any uh, questions? Uh, any hands up? No, but David and Tim are both on. Oh, awesome. Gentlemen, how are you two today? Dr. Tim, David, hello, hello. I heard you were there, but I can't hear you. Maybe your mute buttons are on. Mine was. Aha! <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm doing well. Happy uh, day after Mother's Day, Jeannie. Thank you. I trust you had a lovely day. I did. We Well, we were actually in the car about 10 hours of it, but, <laughs> but we... Um, Settled in here last night, and and so it's been. It was a beautiful day. Wonderful. Actually, we had started we started about 4:30 in the morning packing the van. Uh, we we uh, finished the mind shifters and still point breathing workshop about 7:30 on Saturday, and and uh, went out for dinner with some folks. And we're supposed to go back and pack and drive Saturday night, and we just fell into bed and, uh, and slept till about 4:30, and packed the van and got on the road and. I guess we got in here and after stopping at Unity of Jupiter. We got in here about um, oh seven o'clock or so last night and just kind of crashed. And so all is well. All is well. Wonderful, wonderful. We had a beautiful day up here. Sunny and seventy yesterday. It's going to be in the mid seventies they say today. Nice. And. Um, Took my mother to a little community college symphony and out to dinner and had a wonderful time and so everything is going well. I've had um, very cool. Had had some some wonderful testimonials recently about the work. I shared one last week. The gentleman who said his weekends used to be hell, and now he enjoys his weekends. And someone was in this morning and said, you know. The more I do this work, the more I see benefits in areas that we're not even working on. <laughs> yep. That's how it works. Well, one of the uh, one of the awesome things about it is when we go into that denial and dissociation stage, wherever we pack, you know, the mind, of course, functioning through every cell in the body, wherever we pack away what we don't want to look at, we hide whatever ever strengths, wisdom, intelligence, and capability is there. And so we regularly hear from people that are like, you know, I just – I don't know what's happening. I seem to be more intelligent. I seem to be more capable. I just, you know, things just function and flow better. I'm more in touch. And, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, benefits to uh, engaging in the forgiveness process, for sure. Well, and the other thing that came up several times last week and again this week is the issue of the past generation's material. And um, I had 
occasion to relay a story about my mother's father, my grandfather, and his almost total lack of relationship with his two sons. Right. And he was very German, and they they kind of fell outside the very narrow lines of what was expected from a son in this family. Probably, right. probably because of you know learning disabilities or special you know being more creative or sensitive or not being interested in the family business or whatever. And um, and this sparked a, a a realization in the person I was talking to that. They had a family that came from Eastern Europe, and um, they were very angry, and they were they didn't express love, and they didn't give compliments, and anger was really the only allowable emotion in the house. Right. right. And I mentioned something about, you know, the period of time that 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 person would have been growing up. And it sparked this this person, the the, the grandson uh, and son of that person, to say, "Oh my goodness, yeah, that that was a Russian Jew, mm. and he was a Russian Jew at the time that all of these atrocities were being done to people who were Jewish." And the look on his face and the shock to realize that his father never spoke about being Jewish, never, never talked about it. He was in his 30s or 40s, I forget the exact age, when he when he found out that his father was Jewish. And he never talked about it, never expressed it. So the denial and suppression about all of the emotions of pain and sadness and hurt and love that just they they were obviously too much to deal with and so the only emotion that was allowed to be expressed was anger is uh is it resonating for you right now Tim well what happened for me was I got the image of a balloon. You know those balloons that the clowns make all of the animals with? Right. And how they twist them in, into different segments. Well, there's only so much air. There's always this, this amount of air in the balloon. But if you squeeze one segment, the other segments have to get bigger. And if you squeeze right. all the segments except one, that one gets huge or pops. Well, if you think about us as human beings having this emotional energy all day, every day, and it's there, whether we deny it and suppress it or not, when we deny it and suppress it, it's got to go somewhere else. So what happened was, you know, for a lot of these families, and, and my my grandfather's family was like this, this person I was working with was even more so, when they denied and suppressed the sadness they denied and suppressed the joy. They denied and suppressed the hurt. The only allowable emotion was anger, and it was just over full. Yeah, and, and of course, the, the only allowable emotion was that which created a drug state so that, uh, that, that none of that other stuff could be felt. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. That a lot of people don't know that, and it's not talked about very much, but uh, prior to World War I in Russia, there were 18 million people murdered. You know, they talk about the 6 million in the concentration camps in Germany. There were 18 million people murdered prior to World War I in Russia. I mean, you just think about what has happened, what has gone on. And, and you know, people say, well, you know, it couldn't happen today. It is happening today. Millions uh, around the world. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. You know, in... Uh, in uh, Tibet, in our lifetime, China went into Tibet and murdered over a million people in our lifetime. And they wiped Tibet off the map, 
And, you know, these people who talk about like we're some kind of heroic country going in to save people, we just ignored that totally and completely because there was no money there. We don't go in to save populations. That's that's just a, a black ops cover story. That's just a way to cover the game. Over a million people of these gentle, awesome people in Tibet were just slaughtered. And a whole country was disappeared from the map. And the Western world just went, okay, we'll just pretend it didn't happen. You know, when you look at what's going on, and and then when you recognize Einstein, you know, to me an extension of this is when you recognize Einstein's genius proclamation that says, if you think you're separate or separated from the rest of humanity, you're living in an optical delusion. We aren't separate from those 18 million, from those 6 million, from that million from the the tutus that were just butchered with, you know, I mean, it's just insane. We're not separate from that. We get to experience the energy of that because we are all connected with that. And it's time for enough of us to get big enough to expand out beyond the borders of what's considered to be normal human behavior and be such an active presence of love, such an active state that we can literally begin the dissolution, the the ability to open the veil of the temple and to be able to look at these energies and to become the dissolvers of these energies. Otherwise, it's going to just keep rolling right along. And, you know, the historians 50 years from now will talk about the 10 million, the 20 million, the 5 million, the 100 million that are just, you know, just mowed down in the name of somebody who won't deal with their lives. And in not dealing with their lives are separated from the source of abundance. And being separated from the source of abundance, they think they have to go steal from somebody else. You know, when you steal from people, they're not happy with you. Now, there's a black ops story that goes on that says, yeah, well, those people are mad at us because we've got all these wonderful things and we live this way. Baloney. Those people are mad because we murdered them. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to be honest. It's time to become a voice for the presence of love in the world. To hold those accountable who do not function out of love and to become a big enough space to absorb this horrendous pain that, you know, you're talking, Tim, about uh, you know, these two folks that you've worked with personally and what what they carry and just, you know, the, the space that each of us opens when we, we uh, uh, hold fast to the active presence of love as a human life, as a human being, and, uh, and allow and support the processing through of that insanity. It's just so awesome to be able to do that. Well, it it just opened up the discussion for how I get stuck in different times and it, I can't think of any way in my past, you know, in this lifetime that that would be such an issue for me. And anytime I run into one of those these days, I just assume, okay, this is an issue from my bloodline. This is something that was an issue for one of my grandparents or great grandparents, and I'm just going to treat it as though it's mine. Yeah. And if you look at, you know, you're talking about your grandfather and his relationship with his boys. Did you ever find any challenges in your relationship with your boys, in relating to them, staying connected to them? Well, my biggest challenge with that was on the other side. I always erred in. <clears throat> The dynamic that got lodged in, in me was that it's not okay to be financially successful because right. if you are financially successful, then the consequence will be you'll destroy your relationships. So a lot wow. of worksheets I've done over the years had to do with, and, and other types of work, had to do with this fear of being known, fear of being famous, fear of being successful, fear of being financially uh, well off because of the Lord knows why I mean who who would who would shy away from having financial success but I would end up doing things that would sabotage that and in the work I found there there was this deeply held belief within me that that had to be some of the problem between my grandfather and his sons 
My my grandfather had plenty of money and next to no relationship with his sons. So would would you be up for a mind shifter? All right. How about it's safe and healing to have an abundance of money And with every penny I acquire, my relationships improve. Are you breathing? Yeah, I'm writing. Good. Are you breathing? No. Do I need to do both? (laughs) That's the idea, my friend. (laughs) Of course. Not telling you anything you don't already know. But. Every penny I acquire, my pr- relationships improve. Yeah. Right? That's it. Yes, sir. All right. I'll give it a go. All right. Well, Gene tells me we've got a couple of callers, so let's tap in and see what a caller has to say. Okay, and we also had a comment in the chat room. Um, you were talking about past lives, and perhaps either before or after the caller, just tap in a little bit on your viewpoint of that. Uh, are we actually clearing up from past lives, or is that just the mind's way of, of looking at it? Okay, well, my thought would be that, you know, I've, I've seen many people over the years that um, – have things come up in the form of appearing to be a past life. And so what I support people doing, if it does, is to just deal with it as though that's what it is. And is that factual? I don't know. Uh, it, it may well be nothing more than the creative mind's way of showing it something in a way that it can deal with it. And the truth is it doesn't matter. Do I forgive and move on to the present? Uh, I see a lot of people who get into that past life game and they end up with, uh, you know, just becoming lost in past lives and using it as a way to avoid this particular experience. So so let's listen to our caller. Eric has 517. You're on the air. Hi, everyone. It's Mitzi in Lansing. Hey there, young lady. How are you? Uh, perfect, I'm sure. Everything's... Uh, I- You'd said earlier to um, you're inviting people to share their experiences with the the forgiveness process, and I'm finding it to be quite um, a profound tool, a, t- a digging tool, and I'm learning a lot about my own um, well, the power person. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what she did when the stress was up. It was like. And, and then I realized, oh, well, I don't know because she kind of disappeared. She she was still there, but she wasn't. She would um, mix a drink and smoke a cigarette and read a book. And um, I find that I have those temptations right. also. <laughs> yeah, I find that I have those temptations also. And um, yesterday was a trigger for me. I took my mom to the cemetery, and we put flowers on graves of ancestors and my mom was so sick she could hardly go. She probably shouldn't have. And she's 76 years old and has lost two children recently. And I remember her prayer when my sister was sick was, God, just let me live long enough to take care of Lana. And I just now feel like she's, you know, not going to be around a lot longer. And um, Mm -hmm. so I'm seeing this, like, dynamic in my family of – like abusing the tempo as a way of checking out. And um Well it sounds like sounds like abusing the tempo also as a way of disappearing and leaving. Right. Well physically leaving, and ultimately but leaving. Le- yes, and then physically dying. <laughs> you yeah. know, so I, I feel like I have this um I get to this place where I know what vitality is. I know what it feels like to eat healthy and be clean and clear and vital and I want that I consciously want that but what I find is and I'm grateful for Tim bringing up the the sabotage and why would we fear experiencing our ultimate vitality and well-being but somehow there's this like something inside that I keep writing around and around and around in my worksheets I'm not getting to it of like 
why do the, do I then, well, I know why, consciously, why I would choose to then eat sugar on the day that I said I was going to fast, or I'm going to do eat more raw food and then I don't, you know, or things like that. Um, there's a part so it's a way of me staying that, in the dissociated mind. Yes, and there's, there's a, a part of me that's afraid of standing in my own power. There's fear in standing in truth and power and what that might reveal about me or I don't know. I don't understand it fully, but it's like, well, like, well, you, saying, why, why, you would stand, we, why would we be afraid, <laughs> you know, of our divinity or why would we be afraid of our most clear, powerful self? Well, you know, one of the, uh, the thoughts in the course in miracles about that particular idea is that the reason why we want to separate and evaporate and disappear is because we think God is really peeved with us we think that we've offended the creator and man are we in trouble which of course is a total human non-human fantasy but also you know if you if you imagine let's imagine we've got a vitality meter that goes from zero to ten ten is ultimate hundred percent vitality right so if i'm at a ten can i hide anything from myself can I suppress? Can I dissociate from any kind of pain or turmoil? No. It's all going to be in my face. So there, there's also a state, statement in the scriptures that says you can't storm the gates. You can't go there too quickly. You know, if you went to a 10, if, if, if all of us went to a full power state instantly, we'd be a basket case because of what would come up. And so be gentle with yourself, be understanding with yourself, and just know that <laughs> as long as you're moving in the right direction. And, okay, my, so my I decided to fast. Mind, I, yeah. my, disassoci- my disassociated mind just heard, I, I, it's kind of fun to watch your mind in, in action, but it's like, oh, he's telling me it's okay to eat ice cream for dinner. <laughs> oh, my, my guy's telling me it's okay to smoke a cigarette if I want with my mom. I mean, that's what my mind, actually, how it heard that, but I, I kind of got what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know, though. If we did just get to vital, why wouldn't our vitality cover us? Why wouldn't our vitality hold the space for healing? And, do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, why can't we do that? Oh, it, it absolutely would. However, why did I dissociate from this? Why did my mother dissociate? Why did her mother, her mother, her mother, and her mother? And if I face everything that's gone on in the last hundred generations simultaneously, it would probably wipe me out. So I'm going to build vitality to be able to peel up the next layer and throw the next layer off. But if I were to say I'm going to try to throw everything off at once, Without absolute perfect willingness and absolute zero resistance, it would <laughs> literally burn us out. Okay, so perhaps it's not a fear at all. I think it's what I'm hearing you say is that perhaps it's not a fear of being too um, conscious in this physical unit. Maybe it's just the body's way or the intuitive way of just doing it in a timely fashion. Exactly, and yeah, yeah, that's sort of what I'm saying. Now, you want to make sure that you're you keep you keep moving in the right direction. You don't want to use it as an excuse to go, oh well, or I'll just stay here and drug myself. You know, let me give you an example. I mean, we just did a nine-day intensive in Palm Coast, and there was a woman there who who uh, was a nurse, and she'd been involved in the medical world for you know her whole life, and. Uh, within a couple of days, she was in a major healing crisis. Um, she had had back pain and had had bladder problems to the point where uh, for 30 years, she had not slept through a single night in 30 years. And about the third day of the intensive, she's in a healing crisis, such a healing crisis that in the middle of the night, she gets her husband to take her to the hospital. Hmm. She's, pres- she's prescribed medication. She comes back to the workshop the next morning. She's exhausted, and she's taking her medication, i.e., to keep the vitality down. And uh-huh. after two days of doing that, she starts to put together that every time she puts this pill in her mouth, she gets sicker. So she decides, I mean, no words from me, no conversation with me. She decides she's going to drop them. She totally drops that. 
and she went through two days of ravaging hell. I mean, really, uh, a lot of urinary tract pain, back pain, uh, emotional trauma. She had a big blow up with somebody. I mean, it was, was a lot going on. The next morning, I walked over. We were, we were staying in a separate building. The next morning, I walked over, and she came out of her room with this just huge grin on her face and came uh-huh. over and hugged me and said, I just slept for the first night in 30 years. 30 years. This woman had her first full night's sleep. And wow. she says, I have no urinary tract pain. I have no back pain for the first time in 10 years. Now, she went through a major healing crisis. She went through two days of hell. And the reason why healing is not popular is because it's not Dr. Feelgood. You've got to deal with what's in there. And when it comes up, one one of the things that will happen is the material that we've denied and dissociated from will massage itself. You know, when you're vital enough and you can dig out what doesn't belong, that material will massage itself as it's coming to conscious awareness so that it looks like the current circumstance and the person I'm standing in front of is causing me all this pain. And it it will literally turn what's going on inside of me into my pictures of others, and I'll be sure that what I'm feeling is all about them. And that's right. why you you approach your work on a conscious, consistent, daily basis, but you're not going there yesterday. It's just not part of the process. Okay. And what is it that, you know, you you, you and I shared several months ago with the genetic disorder that had impacted your family that you wanted to deal with that. Right. I'm a, I, I am willing to get, I am. I'm willing to. And it hasn't, you're right, it hasn't always felt good. I mean, I, I don't know if I talked to you about this on the show or not, but just I've had a lot of physical symptoms of healing. And in between those physical symptoms of healing, just a lot more peace. And people are recognizing it in me because I've had so much stress and kind of on this hyper crisis mode for a few years now. And so, there is peace in between the um, moments of discomfort, whether it be emotional or physical or whatever. So I know I am going in the right direction, as you say. Um, so I don't know what it's going to look like. Good breath. That's the kind of breath that releases. I don't know physically, mentally, emotionally what that core issue is in your bloodline that it literally took two of your sisters out. And yeah, my dad said, and my <laughs> lots of people, my niece, like there's yeah. been a lot of um yeah, disease and then leaving. Like I'm yeah. saying goodbye to my people I love a lot lately. Yeah. So I don't know what it's gonna look like when it comes up. When it comes up, that's when when it starts to move on deeper and deeper levels, that's when you're gonna say, Now what I need is my nicotine. Now what I need is my sugar. Now what I need is my rage in order to anesthetize, in order to weaken myself. What drugs do yes, is I they do weaken I it. notice myself doing that. You yeah. know, I, I know it. Yeah. And then, the, and then and it's like, drug- well, that's frustrating because I know better, you know? But it doesn't have to do with your knowing. Remember that, it, you know, listen to the, the ancient teachings. Look to the lives of the fathers, for ours are but a shadow of theirs upon the earth. Those old decisions held in tissue, until you really strengthen that spiritual faculty of choice, decisions will run the system. You can say, I know, and I choose, but when you choose, but you haven't yet fully developed your choosing faculty, the decision from the past generations of, well, you know, we can't deal with this and we don't have, we're not smart enough, we're not good enough, we, we could never work through this, then that decision's going to come up and it's going to tend to steal choice from you. And, and this, is, this is, in essence, this is the story of David and Goliath. You know, Goliath is, you know, in the scriptures is presented as this nine-foot-tall giant who's got, you know, muscle-bound, you know, swords and shields and spears and, you know, invincible. 
and and this mm-hmm. non-being mine when it comes up to take over seems invincible. And you're David, David and Goliath. David has these five smooth stones. There are five spiritual faculties, and one of them is choice. The mind, the Goliath's mind, your body's mind, has decisions. And it's got a decision for everything that it will face. I face something that's too big a crisis for me to handle. I sugar myself. I nicotine myself. And that thing comes up. Goliath comes up and says, this is what we're going to do. While you're standing there saying, no, what I want to do is stay clean and clear, and I want to eat a sprout salad to vitalize me to work through this. And, <laughs> and, and it takes time to develop. You know, that's why they were called the five smooth stones. If it were an actual act of war, I think that if I were the uh, David, I'd have gone out and got some nice jagged rocks that were just the right size that would do as much damage as possible. But no, this was five smooth stones. They're practiced faculties, and choice is one of the spiritual faculties with which you take Goliath's decisions apart. And Goliath is an amalgamation of all the decisions of your previous generations that come up and grab David and say, this is what we're doing. And David, the soul, has no choice and as you do your work you're you're smoothing you're polishing those smooth stones you're you're making them your own practiced faculties and one of the primary ones is choice out of the five it kind of feels like it's the timing the timing is i don't know there's feels like a little bit of urgency inside of me and and I've done a lot of worksheets and oh I knew this material thirty years ago. I wonder what would have happened if I'd have dealt with this then. Like actually done the worksheets instead of done a spattering of them here and there. Like if I'd have committed to five a day like I have now, you know, there's there's a part of me that feels like I could have avoided a lot of pain and you know, that's a whole other issue. But there does some, seem to be like, Okay, I've dallied long enough. <laughs> you know? Time. It's yeah. yeah. Yes, and and no more because um, there's this part, this game I play in my head. Oh, if I got sick, I know I would know exactly what I would do. I would do this and this and this and this. And then there's a part of me that's like, well, then why aren't you doing that? Do you uh, know what I mean? Why, why keep doing the things that you know are going to bring you into some form of physical challenge? Yes, I'm just frustrated with it. Yeah, here's why: anyway. because Goliath's got <laughs> because right now Goliath's got the power, and each worksheet that you do is weakening the power that Goliath has over you. Each practice that you do is strengthening your spiritual faculties, the five smooth stones. And the five smooth stones are choice, intuition, will, true perception, and imagination. They're the five smooth stones you need to develop. So you need to be able to image in, imagine being at choice over Goliath and running the show instead of Goliath running you. You need to strengthen. You remember the laws of living. You might want to dig out your laws of living book from when you did that intensive at Heartland with the kids. Yeah, it's and right here on the table. We'll, it's right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, so so okay. the, the faculty that we focus a lot on in that one and also in the Getting the Stress You Need video is a faculty of will. And the faculty is, of will is the spiritual smooth stone of being able to take charge of your life and being able to do what you choose to do rather than have Goliath step up and say, no, this is what we're doing. So as you strengthen will... And if you uh, if you have it, I, I don't know whether you've still got. If you've got the the book there, you've probably got the uh, your personal code evaluation for uh, I was feedback. For it. Yes, I was looking for it, but I didn't I didn't find it in there. So uh, there's another place to read it. I would like to have okay, it. And I remember it was profound. Because, yeah, yeah. On that sheet, there's a there's a set of assignments for the faculty of will. So you want to strengthen that one, and so. Each faculty is the way that you take apart Goliath. And I I actually, I I put forward, I've been looking for a new subtitle for the rewrite of Why Is This Happening to Me Again? And I've been thinking that the new subtitle might be A Mind is a Terrible Thing to Live In. (laughs) Because when you think you're your mind and you live out of Goliath, out of your mind, then it runs you, and it takes away your higher faculties. 
it takes away your spiritual faculties. You know, the world says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I say a mind is a terrible thing to live in because you are not your mind and you're not the information in your mind. And you're, anything that your mind tells you, your body's mind, obviously is from the past because it's going to speak with words of the past to, to try to keep you sucked into that its reality structure. And it's the awakening to, I am a spiritual being. I am not my mind, nor its content, nor my genetics, nor what goes on in the world. And as I strengthen my capacity to function as that, that's where those five smooth stones then allow me to consciously create my life the way I choose to create it. Yes. And even as you even as you say that, there's a little panic behind it of like, oh wow, <laughs> we have to be completely, completely, you know, functioning from that place, of complete consciousness. There's just like a little bit of like, oh. Anyway, and Goliath okay. all of a sudden, a Goliath all of a sudden becomes a big crowd baby and says, oh, don't get rid of me, don't get rid of me. I I, I love you. You can take come take me with you. Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and it's got to go. It's it's you know the the control from the the false the non-being self, that self that's based in the power person dynamics has to go. And and it's it, it quite literally is what was called the Battle of Armageddon. And what? the battleground, the reason why it's it was what in the ancient scriptures was called the Battle of Armageddon, the battle between David or the soul, and. Uh, Goliath, which is carbon-based memory, was called the Battle of Armageddon. And the battleground is the body hmm. or the energy system. Really? Really. All righty. Well, there's some food for thought. Thank you for Yay. Uh, well, I hope, your, I hope your meal is enjoyable. <laughs> it will be. Thank you. Delighted. Glad to play with you. I look forward to seeing you this summer. Yeah, I know. Will you guys come to Michigan, too? Uh, <laughs> come to Michigan we're, we're sometime. Not, yeah, well, we've, uh, we've, we've, we're hoping to put that in the schedule. Uh, we might uh, – I'm not sure exactly how our travel is going to go when we leave Canada in uh, July or August. But, uh, right. Or pardon me, no, it'll be August, August, September, but we're looking at all of that now. That'd so be that's nice. a well, we, we can talk later after the yeah. show. Maybe we all can right. talk more about that. Okay. Thank you. Hey, I love your questions. Keep them up. That's awesome. This is uh, That makes for a powerful space for everybody to get things on a whole other level. We appreciate you a lot, both you and Rex. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jeannie. All right. Okay. Bless you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye. Dr. Tim. Michael, there's a conversation in the chat room. We do have two callers, but I'm not sure if we're going to get all this done. We're down to nine minutes. But okay. in the chat room, they're talking about um, that anger is a necessity and that it has a place and it's like one of the elements. And I was trying to explain that we don't need anger. Okay. Actually, anger that. is really important. Actually, I, I, I agree with them that anger is really necessary and important if you want to kill yourself. It creates the chemistry of death in the cell, and it destroys you. So if that's what you're about doing, I'm in agreement. Anger is really important. But otherwise, what it does is it takes away your human life. It totally destroys the active presence of love. And if you want to see a video that just in spades just lays the whole thing out so powerfully, get on Netflix and uh, watch the video, uh, Stress Profile of a Killer. There's one scene, I won't go into the whole thing, we've talked about it in a couple of shows previously, but there's one particular piece in this, it's about a um, one-hour History Channel special, and this guy is doing stress measurements on, primarily on baboons, but humans as well, and looking at arterial sclerosis and brain deterioration, et cetera, et cetera, and lifespan, and he ex- he explains that how he just dislikes these baboons because they are so nasty. They are so angry. They are so abusive of each other that he just, you know, I mean, he almost talks about them like a, a family of people that he really dislikes. 
He says, I just don't like these creatures because they're so nasty. But he comes to the point, he's been working with them for decades, so he really has come to respect them and, you know, in a sense, love them too. And he talks about being out in the wild and this travesty that occurs and the dumping of some tainted meat that had tuberculosis in it in a dump and this troop of baboons finds this tainted meat and eats it and they start to die and he's just like oh my god this is such a tragedy and then he watches he's the personal witness of the baboons as they start to die and guess which ones die of tuberculosis the angry, vicious ones. The gentle, nurturing, caring baboons are not touched by the tuberculosis. And he watches, now this is a troop he's been working with for 20 years. He watches as his troop transforms into this gentle, nurturing family of baboons where nobody's picking on the kids, nobody's beating up on the females, very much like the human realm. And when a new baboon, and it's usually males that come in, when a new baboon comes in and is all angry and, you know, does what, you know, baboons normally do, this troop takes them in hand and straightens them out. We don't accept that here. You don't do that behavior here. Now, he doesn't go into an explanation as to how they do that, but he says he's watched, and it takes him about six months to retrain these angry creatures and bring them into the tribe as gentle, nurturing, caring caregivers for the rest. So watch the video. Don't take my word for it. This is like a, a university professor who's doing blood stats on what kills Anger kills. It creates the stress chemicals, cortisol of death. Now, can you make something useful out of it? No, well, you know, it's, it, I guarantee it'll be nothing relative to what you'll be able to do if you function as a human being with the five smooth stones, the five spiritual faculties, and you function with true choice. It, what, what, what you see as the benefit of your anger will do nothing for you compared to functioning as a human being, as the active presence of love. Let's pull the caller in, Jeannie. Jeannie? Okay, Erica, area code 765, you're on the air? 765, Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, Jeannie. Well, young lady Jean, we haven't heard your voice on the show for so long. Welcome, welcome. Oh. Well, I hear you every now and then. I just don't comment or I haven't been... But I wanted to tell you something, or two or three things, kind of humorous when you were talking to uh, Tim, Dr. Tim and you were giving him his mind shifter. I thought at the end you were going to say, and tithe 10% to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you could think about doing that, but anyway. <laughs> well, Jane, we I, I appreciate the fact that you do that on an ongoing basis with us and that yeah. you've supported us for years in that way, and we thank you very much for that. You're welcome, and I, and I like doing it. Uh, I was going well, to definitely help keep the show on the road. Yeah. My last uh, sermon yesterday here was um, about something that you were just saying, and it said that the four most important words that you'll ever hear are we are all one. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was accepted very well, but my, the fact that you were talking about it earlier, I wanted to say that I also recognize that. And uh, if I'm upset with somebody else, it's I'm upset with me. And so I want to, for, you know, really look at that. Anyway, isn't for it about sure. time for you to go off? That knowing, uh, well, I think we've got a few minutes yet. We've still got about five, seven or eight minutes. Okay. So, but yeah, I, I'm in full agreement. I love, you know, Einstein gave us such a gift when he said that, you know, if you think you're separate or separated from the rest of humanity, you're living in an optical delusion. And that when we recognize that if anybody's in pain, we're in pain, although we can deny and dissociate from our pain, it doesn't stop it from being there. And that's what our aging and our aches and pains of aging and all the emotional trauma is made up of. And as we 
decide to expand our human beingness big enough to embrace all of that, we can dissolve it and start to move it off the planet. Like literally, let's dump that garbage. Well, Michael, you know, we talked about, I also played at the church two weeks ago, Thrive, the movie Thrive, which goes along with what you're saying. And my intent is to get also many people to, uh, I bought the DVD and wanting people to, wherever I go, hear that because it gives hope and a way out, I felt very strong about that film. And you did too, am I correct? Absolutely. If you haven't seen the movie Thrive, I don't know if they got it on Netflix yet, do you know? No, I don't think so. They take forever to get it on Netflix. Well, actually, Brzezinski's on there now. Brzezinski's on there. The, um, oh, good. You know that uh, the one I was just talking about, Stress, Profile of a Killer, is on there? Now, there's some pretty good stuff. And if, if you lobby them, if you contact them, and you say, hey, we want this, they'll, they'll put it on there if they have enough demand for it. Is that a Netflix under documentaries? Yes. That you're talking mm-hmm. about? Okay. Yes. Now, the one yep. thing about, about anybody can go to Thrive Movement dot com and then you can order D V D or you can see it there, you know, on on your right. computer. So the thing that I thought was so fascinating about it was uh the fact that the, that we can get out of this mess, but you have to know what it is. You have to you said earlier you, we have to awaken. Absolutely be awake to what's really going on. And of course we've talked about what's really going on for years. But a lot of people don't know about it and they need to know about it. Yes. Yeah, Thrive is is fabulous. So it's thrivemovement.com that they can watch that, right? Right. Right. Awesome. All right, young lady. Well, you have safe journeys on your way to uh, to Kansas, and hopefully we'll see you. Hopefully we'll I'll see you on the uh, – or Oklahoma, I mean. And uh, right. we'll see you uh, on the 12th of July. I hope so. And be sure right. and think about – Stay uh, doing Oklahoma City again. You know, it's been a couple years. It has. Okay. We'll put that in the hopper. Okay. All right. All right. Bless Talk you. to you later. Appreciate Love you all. You. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, it looks like we're down to about 60 seconds, Jeannie, so I guess our last caller is with, with If you would call in tomorrow, we'd be delighted to start right off with your calls, and we appreciate your calls, and it really is what makes the show live. And uh, we are uh, going to be in uh, – Jupiter, Florida, uh, the week of June the, let's see, the 10th, and then on the 24th, we'll be in Wilmington, North Carolina, both at Unity Churches. So we appreciate you. Take the tools, share them with others, bring a stranger to the show tomorrow, and create the best year yet of your eternal life. Blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie, who present that internal 